Good day, everyone. We are counting down my top 10 AFL Grand Finals, and we're talking strictly the AFL era, 1990 up to this current day. We're up to number seven on the list, and it is one I'm sure everyone will remember. It is the 2005 Grand Final, Sydney getting up over West Coast by a paltry four points and winning their first premiership as the Swans for 72 years in the process. A thrilling game, this one. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people probably think I should have this higher on the list or would have it higher on their own list. Um, I've probably marked it down a little bit, only in comparison to some a pretty epic other grand finals in terms of the standard of footy itself. This was a pretty scrappy contest and certainly a low-scoring contest with an aggregate of just 15 goals for the game. No doubt about how absorbing a contest it was, though, and certainly a nail-biting, one of the most um, tension-packed grand finals I can remember seeing uh, in my lifetime of attending the big event. Um, in, in terms of the build-up, uh, interesting build-up for both those clubs. West Coast had a, a really good year in 2005 under John Warsfold were uh, up near the top of the ladder most of the season. Not so Sydney. They uh, started pretty scratchily. In fact, only won two of their first six games. <clears throat> and it was around that time AFL CEO Andrew Demetrio famously was critical of uh, the Sydney brand of football under Paul Roos, which was, of course, a, a famously tight and contested brand of footy in which the Swans actively sought stoppages. Uh, very good around the stoppages, and that served them very well. Demetrio remarked, of course, that they'd never win a premiership playing that brand of football. Well, that would uh, soon come back to haunt him or bite him on the ass. you'd probably be saying if you're a Sydney supporter. Uh, in terms of the lead-up to the big day, West Coast had a another thrilling victory over Sydney in the qualifying final at Subiaco, uh, one of a, a number of... Um, epic games between those two clubs who had an incredible run of games all decided by less than a kick over this period. Uh, West Coast then beat Adelaide in a home preliminary final to get to the grand final. Sydney had to do it the hard way after losing that qualifying final. Um, they, of course, were on the verge of bowing out in the second week against Geelong at the SCG when that man, Nick Davis, pulled off one of the great um, steals, I guess, in finals history. Certainly one of the great quarters played by an individual in uh, finals history um, with a few uh, four late goals managing, including one literally in the last 10 seconds, enough to pip Geelong at the post, the Cats heartbroken, Sydney through to a preliminary final. And again, um, they pull one out of the bag against St Kilda, which went in favourite. Neck and neck for three quarters in this game, and then the Swans absolutely exploded with seven goals to nothing in the last quarter to storm into a grand final against the Eagles, the second uh, non-Victorian grand final in a row. Plenty of anticipation even in Melbourne about it, though. These teams clearly were developing a great rivalry, and uh, so it played out. Uh, a pretty good start, a relatively open start in the context of what the game would become. A couple of fantastic goals for the Eagles to kick things off. Mark Nikoski and big ruckman Dean Cox kicking a couple of rippers on the run. Sydney uh, replying with one to Darren Jolly. And a couple of other goals to them um, through the agency of Adam Schneider and Barry Hall, um, giving the Swans a two-point lead at the first change. Sydney began to take over the game in the second quarter, however. West Coast held goalless in the second term, while Sydney were able to add three through the agency of Michael O'Loughlin, Ty Kennelly and Adam Goods. And they went into half-time with a 20-point lead, which in the context of a game in which only eight goals have been scored to the long break, looked like it might well and truly be enough. Um, for the Swans, Lewis Roberts Thompson playing an outstanding game, really rising to the occasion for them. Uh, Jared Crouch, uh, Brett Kirk, you know, really leading that Bloods ethos. Nick Fosdyke, a really good grand final he had for them too. Jude Bolton, his usual 
hard-headed self. In fact, yet another uh, head wound led to Jude having to uh, be patched up and uh, don a, a fair bit of bandaging around the head to complete this game and a helmet to complete the game. Eamon Buchanan also pretty good for the Swans. But the Eagles weren't done with and uh, they would come out in the third quarter and really give it a decent crack. And this time it was the Swans who were held goalless as the Eagles fought back to within a kick. Uh, goals to Andrew Embley, Ashley Hansen, and then a great goal from the boundary line by Adam Hunter, who had become something of a swingman for the Eagles. He had gone from defence to forward and really given a bit of extra bite to what was a pretty lifeless forward set up to that stage. So the difference at the final change, just two points. Um, some amazing stuff to follow in the last term. Absolute drama to begin with when Sydney's Luke Ablett took a, a terrific mark, a one-handed mark in the back pocket, uh, turned and um, fatefully kicked the ball across goal to a teammate. It was intercepted by Ben Cousins, who marked in the goal square, and his goal put the Eagles back in front for the first time since the first quarter. And only a minute later, Adam Hunter bobbed up again to mark on the goal line. Uh, from the tightest of angles, he managed to screw his second goal. And the Eagles, all of a sudden, were 10 points up and looking the goods. Sydney, though, as they'd had a habit of doing the whole year, fought back hard. Barry Hall marked well and kicked a really good goal from right on the 50-metre line, making it just to kick the difference. And then in a real goalmouth scramble, some magnificent ro roving from a stoppage by Eamon Buchanan and his snap off balance, just scraping through the goals to give Sydney a lead. The Swans then missed a couple of chances to effectively sew the game up, leaving this going right down literally to the last seconds. The Eagles rushed a point, looked like they might be able to scramble a goal, but it was rushed through for a point. From the resultant kick in, Leo Barry thumped the ball along. Dean Cox marked, pumped it back into the teeth of goal. And Leo Barry answered the call with one of the great individual acts in grand final history. An amazing uh, pack mark floating in from the side of the pack. One of the most famous photographs or still photographs in the history of football, let alone grand finals. And of course, producing one of the famous lines of commentary from Channel 10, Steve Quartermain. Leo Barry, you star. As he slumped to the turf with the ball, the siren rang. It was literally one or two seconds before siren time. The siren rang. Sydney had broken a 72-year premiership drought. Heartbreak for the Eagles, but as events would transpire, they would get another crack at it 12 months later against the same opponent, no less. A riveting game, not huge on skills, but certainly gripping and huge on tension and a fantastic storyline as well. That is number seven in my countdown of top 10 AFL Grand Finals. Join us back here for number six.